So we finally get to finish up the cash budget. We're going to be finishing off the disbursements part and then we're going to be moving into um, essentially how we're going to finance any cash shortages. So we're just going to be looking at equipment purchases and uh, interest and dividends paid for the disbursements and then we will get on to the financing part. All right. So to start off, let's start with the equipment purchases, which are essentially capital purchases or purchases of equipment and cars and um, factory capital and all that. So it says in April we purchased 19750 so we're going to add that as a disbursement there, and we're going to have zero in the subsequent months, which is what it says right there. Next up, we have our dividends, which are listed below. The dividends we're assuming are cash, because if they were stock dividends, they would uh, put a little bracket here and a little note saying stock dividends. In that case, it would not show up on the cash budget, because stock dividends are not a cash item. But we're assuming that they're cash dividends, so we're going to say 0 for April, 0 for May, and 4000 for June, which is listed there. Finally, we have interest. And interest is interest that's payable on the notes payable outstanding. So this balance sheet is for or it's for March 31st, and which is essentially the same as the beginning of April. So um, listed is notes payable, a balance of zero dollars. So this means that we're going to be paying zero dollars of interest because if we have no debt outstanding beforehand, we're not going to be paying any interest on no debt, which makes sense. I'm going to save the interest column for May and June just till after, and you'll see why in a second. That's because, well, it's because we're not borrowing any money yet, but we will be borrowing money. And that is because we need a minimum cash balance of $8,000. And that is a policy that is stated right here. We require $8,000 of cash. So let's figure out how much cash we have right now. We have a $9,000 balance plus $14,000 from cash receipts and $48,000 from credit receipts. Subtract 40650 of inventory purchases, subtract 20500 of operating expenses, subtract 19750 of equipment purchases. And we have a deficit of $9,900 of cash, which means we're going to have to borrow $9,900 plus $8,000 to cover the minimum amount we need. So in total, we're going to have to borrow $17,000. $900. And our ending cash balance is going to be 8000 Now that we have the ending cash balance, all we do is we carry it over because it is the beginning cash balance for May, which is why we have to make sure all these numbers are correct. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to um, add up all the cash balances and receipts, uh, subtract the disbursements, so 8000 plus 17000 plus 56,000, minus 48,300, minus 22,000, gives us a cash balance of 10,700. And of course we need that minimum of 8,000 in every month. So what this means is we can actually pay back some of the amount that we borrowed in April. But remember, we can't Normally, you would think 10,700 minus the 8,000, so we can pay back 2,700. But remember that we have to pay interest on the 17,900 because we pay it monthly listed right here at a rate of 12%, and the rate is always a yearly or an annual amount. So that means we're going to be paying 12% yearly or 1% monthly because 12 divided by 12 is 1%. So, 17900 which is the carrying value of our notes payable, or our debt, times 1% is $179, and that is going to be our interest. So when we had uh, our excess of cash, I totally forget what that number is, so I'm just going to quickly add it up one more time. 
subtract 48,300, subtract 22,000, 10,700, okay. So we subtract, this is how much cash we have at the end of May. Uh, now we subtract the 179 of interest, and then we subtract the minimum since we have to have 8,000 on hand at the end of the month, which means we can pay back $2,521. So payment $2,521, which is going to reduce this carrying value. And then we will be left over with a balance of $8,000 again. We carry over the 8,000, and finally we do it one more time for June. 8,000 uh, plus 18,000 plus 68,000, subtract 49,350, subtract 22,500, subtract 4,000 is 18,150. All right. And our carrying value uh, for our debt is 17,900. Subtract the payments we made, which is 15,379, and we multiply that by uh, 1%, which is $154 approximately, and that's going to go in the interest part right there. So the 18,150. We're going to subtract the interest now, which is 154, and that means we can make uh, a payment of $9,996 because we need, again, a balance of 8000 at the end. All right. And that is going to be our cash budget for April, May, and June. It is that, well, I'm not going to say it's that easy because it's actually a quite long process, especially the inventory purchases is a very difficult part. Um, even the collection sometimes screws people up because of the timing, and pe you'll read something like you collect uh, money from two months preceding this and one month preceding that and in the month of, and it confuses people. So... Um, Make sure you go over the collections part, the inventory purchases part, and maybe the financing part because those are the very difficult parts. And essentially you should be good to go after that and then you'll be able to construct a cash budget for your final exam. Alrighty, so any questions with this tutorial or any of the cash budgets tutorial, leave below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and try and like my videos if you found this helpful in any way. Alrighty, I'll be talking about variance analysis in the next tutorials. See you guys later.